This is part 6 of a review of exponential and logarithmic functions. If you have not seen part 5, you can either click the link that appears in the upper right hand corner or find the link in the description. In this video, I will show you how to solve problems involving semi-log graphs. This is AP Precalculus Topic 2.9 through 2.15. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. Number 37. Plot the following points on the same coordinate plane above. And this is clearly a semi-log graph where the y-axis has been logarithmically scaled. So when we plot the point A, 0, 30, we're going to start here at 0. But 30 will take us past 10. And as you pass 10, you begin to count by tens. So this is 10. But then the next line is 20, and the next line is 30. So this is point A right here, 0, 30. And I'm just going to put an A next to that one. And now let's do point B, 1, 2. So here's 1, and notice that we are starting at a Y value of 1. And then the next line will be the 2. So this is 1, 2, not that next line. That next line is actually 3. So this is point B right here. Moving on to point C, 2, 400. So this is going to take us past 100. As you pass 100, you begin to count by hundreds. So this is 100. The next line is 200 and then 300 and then 400 will be right here. So this is point C. Before we graph point D, I need to emphasize something to you. Notice that on a semi-log graph, the five is not right in the middle like we're used to. The five is about two thirds of the way up, much closer to 10 than it is to one. And the number that is closest to the middle is the 3. It's a little bit below the middle, but 3 is the closest to the middle. Now we are ready to plot point D, 3 comma 1.5. First of all, remember that 1 is not this line up here. 1 is actually the bottom line. So we're starting right at 1. The next line is 2. 1.5 will not be right in the middle. The 0.5 is going to be about two thirds of the way up, closer to two than it is to one. So do not put 1.5 right in the middle. Definitely don't put it up here. Put it closer to the two. The number right in the middle would be like 1.3. Point E, 4, 11. So here's 4. Um, 11 will be past the 10, but as we pass 10, we count by tens. So this is 10 on the bold line. The next line up is 20. So 11 is just a little bit past 10. So we'll just put it right about here. So this is point E. Number 38 is the same type of thing. The grid to the right is a semi-log plot with the vertical axis logarithmically scaled. Plot the following points on the same coordinate plane on the right. I think it will help if we label these lines in between the numbers. Obviously between 1 and 3 there's going to be a 2. And yeah, this line is the 2 even though it is closer to the 3 than the 1. That's how a semi-log graph is. What you would expect to normally be in the middle is about two-thirds of the way up. As we pass the three, we begin counting by threes. So we think three, six, nine. And this is the six. As we pass the nine, we start counting by nines. So this is nine. But then the next line is two nines, which is 18. And then, of course, three nines is 27. As we pass the 27, 
we count by 27s. So this is 127. This line right here is 227s, or 54. And then 81 is 327s. So point A, 0, 2, is right here. And then point B, 10, 18. So here's 10, and here is 18. And then point C is 20, 6. So here's 20, and here is 6. And then we have point D, which is 30, 12. For point D, this 12 falls between the lines, so we have to be very careful. In fact, don't write this down. I am showing a common mistake. Between 9 and 18. We're sort of counting by three, so we know it's going to be uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So what we're used to is evenly spacing the 12 and the 15. But on a logarithmically scaled graph, the 12 is actually going to be very close to the middle. Everything is sort of scrunched towards the top, just like the two is actually two-thirds of the way up, the 12 is actually very close to the middle. So there's your point D. And then finally, point E is 40, 1.5. So here's 1 and here's 2. Like we have practiced, we now know that 1.5 will not be right here in the middle. It'll actually be about two-thirds of the way up, so make sure you point, put your point E closer to 2 than you do to 1. So point E will be about here, about 2 thirds of the way up. 39. The function f is graphed on the semi-log plot above where the vertical axis has been logarithmically scaled. Which of the following functions could be a model for f? A key thing to know about a semi-log plot is that if a function looks linear on a semi-log plot, it is actually exponential, or at least a transformation of an exponential function. For that reason, we can eliminate option A as a possibility. This function looks linear on the semi-log plot. That means it's actually based on an exponential function, and option A is linear. For the rest of these, let's use test values to see if the output matches what we see on the graph. For example, for part B, let's check f at 0 and see what happens. So f at 0 would be 2 plus e to the 0 power, which would be 2 plus 1, which would be 3. Is it possible that this is 3? Well, here's e right here. Hopefully you have memorized that e is approximately 2.72. Uh, we are still in the calculator active section, so in fact, let's go ahead and figure out a decimal approximation for each one of these values. You can see the little E right here above the LN button. So we need to hit second LN, and now we can do things like E squared. And similarly, we can do E to the third power and e to the fourth power. Three would be above this line. So b is not the answer. Let's use a test value of zero on option c. This would give us two e to the zero power. Uh, e to the zero power is one, so this is two times one, which is two. This point could be 2. So we can't eliminate C. But let's look at D next. Again, sticking with a test value of 0, this would again give us 2e to the 0 power. So we have not eliminated C or D. However, if we take a closer look at option D, we see that 2 times e to the negative x is the same as 2 over e to the x. 
So as x increases, the overall value of this function will decrease. The denominator is getting bigger and bigger, but the value of the function is getting smaller and smaller. That is not what we see on this graph. This graph is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So D cannot be the answer, which means the answer is C. Let me go back and show you another way to solve this problem if you're not allowed to use a calculator. The graph appears linear with a positive slope. However, the y-axis has been logarithmically scaled with a base e. That's natural log. If we take the natural log of f of x, we should get a linear function with a positive slope. For example, if we take the natural log of the function in option c, we have the natural log of 2 e to the x power. But using our properties of logarithms, we can separate this as the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of e to the x. In this form, we can see that the natural log and the base e will cancel each other out. That gives us natural log 2 plus x. Now, think about y equals mx plus b and switch these terms around. Remembering that the natural log of 2 is just a constant, we have something in the form y equals mx plus b, where the slope is a positive 1. So we get a linear expression with a positive slope, just like we expected. Compare that to option d. We have the natural log of 2 times e to the negative x, which can be expanded as the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of e to the negative x. The natural log and the base e cancel each other out, and we are left with the natural log of 2 plus negative x. If you sort of switch these around and put a y in front of it, we have y equals negative x plus natural log 2. This is linear. It is like y equals mx plus b, but it has a negative slope, not a positive slope as we wanted. So that's another way to see that D is not the answer. When we try to take the natural log of options A or B, it's immediately no. Because we don't have multiplication or division on the inside, there is no property of logarithms that will allow us to expand and then simplify. So there is no way to rewrite these expressions in a linear form, like y equals mx plus b. So the answers cannot be A or B. Number 40. A set of data is shown on the semi-log plot above. If an exponential regression is used to model the data, which of the following claim and explanation statements best fit these data? We have learned that if a graph looks linear on a semi-log plot, the function is actually exponential. However, this graph does not look linear. Linear would be like this blue line here. So, since the graph does not look linear on a semi-log plot, the function is not exponential. I'm noticing that the answer choices are all about whether or not an exponential model was appropriate and what the residual plot will look like. But if the function is not exponential, then an exponential regression model is not appropriate. We have learned that when your regression model is not appropriate, the residual plot will show a clear pattern. That means the answer is C. The residual plot will show a clear pattern because the exponential model was not appropriate. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.